Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here back on this Monday, February 20th, 2023. It's about 10 10 a.m. here along the West Coast in California. And the uh, latest earthquake shows a 3.0 over here around the Turkey area. This comes after a 6.3 magnitude earthquake striking the Turkey area just about an hour ago. Uh, this strong aftershock showed up here in the Turkey region again just about an hour ago. But further down south along this plate boundary, it uh, looks like closer to the uh, Turkey-Syria border. 6.3 coming in at 10 kilometers deep, shaking things up out there in the Red Pager area. Well, at least for the uh, community internet intensity map. Uh, yellow for the official USGS map here. Um, and looking at the Did You Fill It reports, a little spotty, but uh, a few folks did report some very strong to uh, potentially some severe shaking out there around the epicenter of that uh, earthquake today. Now this does make this aftershock uh, one of the stronger earthquakes, or as far as the aftershock activity goes, since the 7.8 and 7.5 here earlier this month. By the way, both of these two larger quakes struck further up north into the region of Turkey. Today, 6.3 uh, is the fourth largest earthquake in this cluster of movement today. And... Uh, well, I should say over the last couple weeks here since uh, early February. Now, again, this is a ways away from the main quakes that kind of occurred up here at the epicenter of the uh, seven pointers or more positioned uh, into the Turkey area further into it there. Yesterday, we seen a migration of earthquake activity away from this main swarm region, main the main... Uh, location of the earthquakes if you will uh, further east in this little cluster right here along the plate boundary quite a few fours were popping off there uh, and it looks as though we're starting to go back westward southwestward here with some newer activity where that 6.3 struck so things are still relatively unstable across this entire region and you know that's that's a lot of earthquake activity that we've seen with that 7.8 and 7.5 um, just a very sensitive area in terms of uh, the dynamics that are set up out here. So continue to watch this region. You know, the migration of earthquake activities is rather interesting as well. Um, so just kind of watching it. I don't definitely don't think we're done yet. Watch this area south here as it heads towards the Cyprus area. Uh, this is the last 30 days, 4.5 and above. This is showing, oh, about 139 earthquakes, and that's a lot of magnitude. That's a lot of energy um, in terms of earthquake movement out there. Mostly fours and fives, but they're, you know, again, we've seen that 7.8, 7.5. And today's 6.3 is the largest um aftershock if you will but I, I don't really consider these aftershocks if they're so far away from the main quake you know which was 7.8 up here it's just um kind of a as i mentioned it before an entire unzipping of the plate boundary so to speak uh, i think a, a lot of earthquake activity can trigger um regional faults and also just plate boundaries in general uh, if they have not seen any uh, movement in quite a while in that specific area which is uh, the case in this activity around Turkey and Syria but either way we'll continue to watch this as it uh, seems as though it, wanna, it wants to fill in uh, or I should say spread out filling in would be within this area of the larger quakes but this is kind of spreading out along the plate boundaries here west east and now west so we'll continue to watch that uh, for some further movement. Uh, this earthquake did trigger a false reading uh, further to the east over here. Um, the GeoNet servers showed a 6.8 over here around the uh, Myanmar area. This is kind of our watch zone, so I was like, wow, the watch zone finally got hit. But no, um, whatever server or whatever technique the, U the uh, GeoNet <laughs> 
whatever technique the GeoNet servers utilize to, um, you know, put out their earthquake activity to the uh, catalog book, it uh, wasn't accurate. What it did was pick up the seismograph waves from the 6.3 somewhere over here because uh, they had a 6.8 listed up here on the globe. It has since been removed because, uh, well, I removed the GeoNet servers again, but this time for good uh, until they can figure out what their, you know, what their process is uh, and how to accurately put out information. Um, so, yeah, some seismic waves triggered the GeoNet servers to put out a 6.8 earthquake within this area. And that was a false phantom earthquake. And that's what I don't like to see on the globe because we only want factual data verified earthquake activity up here. 6.8 uh, can be a little bit on the concerning side uh, in a certain region. And not only for locals and stuff like that in area in that area. Um, but, um, you know, to have a phantom earthquake up here on the globe is just not good. So GeoNet server, or at least New Zealand, is covered here by the EMSC model. Uh, so we'll just stick as it is. No more false phantom earthquakes up on the globe at all. <clears throat> don't want don't want that. All right, so um, things definitely kicking up out here today uh, across the region. We are seeing some of these quiet areas. Um, get hit slightly. I know some activity here over the last couple days around the Papua New Guinea area westward and also a bunch of movement here around Tonga and Fiji over the last couple days. That quiet zone is starting to fill in a little bit with a 5.1 earthquake out here just now as we speak into the Solomon Islands area. Uh, not Definitely not a big earthquake but uh, shaking things up out there a little bit. It looks like about 12 kilometers deep just outside the uh, capital region. Back prior into the Tonga Trench. A lot of this activity from yesterday. Remember we did see some deeper movement quakes here over the last few days. And it looks as though we had a couple after midnight as well. Uh, way down there below the 500 kilometer range into the Tonga Trench. Uh, areas of the Kermadec Trench, there's not a whole lot going on. EMSC model here reporting, um, looks like a 4 point, uh, what is that, 3.1? Yeah, deeper 3.1 here into the southern end of the Kermadec Trench with uh, South Island, New Zealand, seeing a 3.1 fairly recent quake uh, down there. And of course, a cluster of movement, a uh, huge cluster. Most of this is from yesterday, though. Looks like this has kind of come to a halt and we're starting to back build some further strain along this plate boundary and those quiet zones are filling in. Solomon Islands there is a kind of a uh, testament to that. Up into the Kuril Kamchaka Trench here, most of this activity from yesterday. A couple smaller quakes, four, four and a low grade five. I say smaller because that's uh, definitely overdue for something much bigger. Uh, 4.9 Indonesia, northern end of the Java Trench. And yes, you know, we are kind of watching this area area here north around the Andaman Sea into Myanmar. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's going to be something similar to a 6.8 or higher once this area does start, start to show some further movement. Um, but not with false earthquakes, not with phantom earthquakes there. We want... Uh, legit activity uh, and uh, factual data when it comes to reporting on the globe. All right, let's see here. Further west across the Mediterranean, let me see what we got here. Uh, some older movement quakes are from yesterday, that 4.5. Uh, right now, I think the big spot is that. Uh, the Turkey area and with that migration there following that 6.3 we'll continue to watch that. Uh, Northern California, well that's way north of Northern California. Let's see what we got going on up here into the uh, Pacific. Looks like just along the uh, it's going to be the uh, plate, uh, plate boundary of the Pacific and in this case the Juan de Fuca plate. There's a little Explorer plate up here, a little micro plate, three different separate plates here, 
but uh, we'll just call it the Juan de Fuca plate for now as a whole. Uh, that's where that uh, 4.1 struck earlier this morning, 10 kilometers deep. Yesterday did see a little bit of activity along the Blanco fracture zone. No further activity to note here across the Pacific Northwest. In fact, things look calm and quiet. Uh, nothing showing up across the Intermountain West. Kind of find that hard to believe, but uh, let me see what we got here for Yellowstone. Um, not a whole lot. And by the way, folks, um, in, in terms of figuring out if an earthquake is legit or not, like for example, that 6.8, um, many of us seen it up here on the globe, positioned right over here around India, Myanmar area. And when I seen that, I thought, wow, um, let me check it and see, who, see who's reporting it. And it's GeoNet. And I'm thinking, okay, that's uh, a little on the odd side. So I went and checked some of the seismograph stations, the live seismograph stations. And um, Turkey was still kind of recovering from that 6.3 that came in moments prior um, on their seismograph station, which is up here. But I looked for a signal of a 6.8, and I didn't see any. Uh, so right then I kind of knew that that was indeed a, face, or, uh, a fake <laughs> earthquake, false phantom earthquake, if you will. And uh, so that's, that's a good way to see if you know a, a legit earthquake has taken place. By looking at live seismographs, a 6.8 is going to be rocking. Uh, the graphs pretty nicely and a look here now that we're about a, an hour or so later we can look at recorded graphs and see that there was only uh, looks like just only one distant larger quake here and I'm not even for sure if that's going to be the 6.3 or not let me look here and see something there it is a little bit more defined here on the uh, Moose Creek, Idaho station. That's going to be the 6.3 in Turkey. Just barely picked up, but it did uh, pick it up on that seismograph. The 6.8, seven pointers, they'll show up very drastically across the map here. So didn't see it. All right. Uh, far as local seismic activity goes, we're not looking at too much movement around the Yellowstone area. Things relatively quiet. Uh, for now, and it looks like it's covering a good portion of the states there. Not a whole lot of activity. California, very minimal as well. We did see some activity off the coast of the Pismo Beach region, 2.0, and a couple other smaller quakes there, early morning time frame. Uh, that is just off of the, uh, looks like the San Luis Range fault system. A little small fault that runs uh, along the coast range. A couple different other uh, larger faults that do sit off the coast here and I'm sure a couple that haven't been uh, marked far as being discovered one earthquake down into the Ocotillo Wells 1.3 and over here around the salt and sea area kind of watching this uh, looks like we did have a little bit more earthquake activity along the Brawley seismic zone which sits down here uh, yesterday we did see a little bit of adjustment up north and a little bit closer to the San Andreas Fault as well, but it looks like um, not seeing any major swarm or any uptick currently. Just a little bit of seismic activity. Again, anything that may pop up on or around here, uh, I think in, in terms could trigger uh, the big one down here along the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. But for now, that's not the case. <clears throat> And again, the rest of the country, pretty quiet. New Madrid Seismic Zone 2.0 from last night in Missouri. South America region, relatively quiet. Up into Alaska, it looks a little bit more active up here. Um, of course, some of this activity from yesterday, that 4.2. A little bit of odd earthquake activity way up north. Um, 3.4 and a 2.9. Nothing big, but definitely a little uptick across the area today. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's about it, folks. Um, I got quite a bit on my plate here today. I got to do. Um, Dinsmore, that's going to be uh, 
Northern California. I'm just kind of looking at these seismographs here, seeing if I see any unusual activity. It looks fairly calm for now uh, across these seismographs. <clears throat> uh, space weather activity here across the region of the sun. We did see an M flare pop off. Uh, M4.4 from 3234. That's a newly named sunspot. We were kind of chatting about that last night. It finally got its name. Sparking off a uh, dramatic flare there. Looks pretty uh, fairly impressive. Not a huge one, but uh, an M flare, 4.4. And that's going to be this region. This is actually an older image. The most recent imagery here of 3234 is going to be right here. And it does look fairly complex. Here's this region that popped off the X flare a couple days ago. I think it does still harbor some potential. <clears throat> I've seen uh, some stronger flaring, but we'll continue to watch that here as it rotates into the Earth view. For now, uh, definitely a couple active regions up there around the northeastern section of the sun. Current UV image. Uh, this one's definitely lighting up. Getting that special spark going right there between the magnetic lines and the fields here. I uh, think we may see something else here very soon from that new... Uh, sunspot region named 3234. Uh, no major storms forecasted and in fact that uh, glancing blow from the CME that was expected last night never uh, never appeared. Or if it did it was very minor. Looks like there was just a little incoming shock wave from that CME um, And I, I can see it right here, just barely visible, a little uptick in density and speed, but uh, it didn't create any major storming conditions in terms of the KP index here uh, across the board. Never got up to even the uh, three range. So we'll, uh, we'll wait, uh, hopefully, for um, Earth-directed CME so we can spark up the auroras up there at the higher latitudes. Right now, fairly minimal. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe. Uh, again, um, when it comes to New Zealand quakes, we'll definitely check that on uh, EMSC model. And uh, also GeoNet there on some updates as well. We'll most likely do that tonight. But uh, just, you know, it's safe to say that we don't want false phantom earthquakes up on the globe, right? If there's a 6.8 occurring, uh, it better be legit. So for an agency to throw up a, uh, a false earthquake like that, just I can't have it. I just I don't I don't want it. A station this channel's always been about you know providing factual data, not just hearsay or um, you know false information. So we try to stick to the facts, ma'am, and that's it. Alrighty, have a good day. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on this evening with the update for now. USGS and the EMSC model um, showing data up here around the globe. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys a little bit later.